So let's sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Matt, would you be kind enough to read 1 Timothy for me? Give my voice a break. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all of this, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness, fight the good fight of the faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made Good, the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do, to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it.
Can I hand over to you again, Matt? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted scrumptiously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered in with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things but now he is comforted here and you are in agony besides all of this between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us he said then father i beg you to send him to my father's house for i have five brothers that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For me, the only response to the pa parable of Dives and Lazarus is to look at Friday's economic statement and to feel that 2,000 years after Jesus told his story, no one in power seems to be listening. It's probably a good thing that I'm not feeling 100% and I'm too tired to put my anger into words. Bishop Philip, the Bishop of Burnley, one of the poorest parts of the Church of England, commented, What we have heard reminds me of the savage cuts of the early 1980s, which did intergenerational harm and from which many working class communities have never recovered. Will we never learn? Trickle down benefits only the rich. The Children's Society the charity we do Chris Dingle for year in and year out, have said that what is needed is, and I quote, targeted support for children. We need investment in a system that works for children and struggling families in the long term. Well, we didn't see that on Friday. Indeed, we saw the exact opposite. God to has told us how to serve how, as human beings, we are called to care for all human beings. He tells us in the Gospels. He tells us in the writings of Paul and the other figures of the New Testament. He tells us in the words of the Old Testament. The psalm set for this morning is Psalm 146. And it's not just beautiful bit of language that we leave to choirs to sing. The Psalms are a manifesto for godly living. Here are the words in the prayer book. Blessed is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, and whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, who keepeth his promise for ever, who helpeth them to right that suffer wrong, who feedeth the hungry. The Lord looseth men out of prison. The Lord giveth sight to the blind. The Lord helpeth them that are fallen. The Lord careth for the righteous. The Lord careth for the strangers. He defendeth the fatherless and widow. As for the way of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God, O Zion, shall be king for evermore and throughout all generations. How much more do we need? 
This is what the Lord says, and he uses his people in his work. On Monday, we said goodbye to someone special, as the Archbishop reminded us. In 1953, the Queen began her coronation with silent prayer. Her allegiance to God was given before any people gave allegiance to her. Her service to so many people in this nation, the Commonwealth and the world, had its foundation in her following Christ, God himself, who said that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. She was joyful, present to so many, touching a multitude of lives. Well, she touched our lives and we seek to follow Christ just as she did. Now, I know I am blessed because, to quote the psalmist again, I have the God of Jacob for my help. And even when I'm feeling blur, and my CT scan happened on Tuesday, but I've heard no more results yet, I've got to be patient. Even when I feel blur and very tired, God is with me, and I try and hang on to that. But I read the reading from 1 Timothy, and the first verse, we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's not a passage I'm finding very comforting at the moment. I used it twice this week as I walked into church, on Monday in front of Dorothy's coffin, and on Thursday in front of Iris's. And I know I'm going to feel better and everything will be fine, but it doesn't always feel like that. And yet, even when life is tough, I know that I am surrounded by love. Both funerals were hard work, Iris's especially, because I knew her, and even though she and her family have a wonderful faith, no one likes saying farewell to a friend. We did the service in St Edmunds, then went down to the crematorium, I did the committal, and then I went outside to wait for the family who were listening to the final music. I was shattered and I wobbled. Rachel, the funeral director from the co-op, put out a hand to steady me, put an arm round me and told me in no uncertain terms to sit down and rest. There is something wonderful when it's the undertaker who's the one looking after you. Apparently, I don't need to worry until she gets her tape measure out. So that's what friends are for, isn't it? But it was only on reading this passage again that I noticed we don't start with for we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out of it. We actually start with godliness with contentment is great gain. So can we be peoples of godliness? People who pray, who worship, people who read their Bibles, people who have a belief and a knowledge that we walk with God, working with him to build a better world. You don't need deep theology or a prayer life to rival Mother Teresa, but you need to feel the reality of God, the reality of Christ in your life. That might well be as you look at the beauty of the world, the love of your friends, the conversations with the kids or the grandkids that don't actually mention God, but you still know that they're loved and blessed by him. It will be the sharing of the resources that we've got, because we're all blessed, we're all rich, we all have more than we need. It will be joining with others to build a better world and feeling love and solidarity as we fight together. It's interesting that the RSPB and the National Trust and the Wildlife Trusts have all started to mobilise their members to fight against planning changes that were also announced on Friday. Planning changes that will take away so many of the protections that the natural world needs. We need to fight and no one is fighting alone. 
And contentment is not just saying yeah, everything's fine, we'll be OK. Contentment is knowing that, yes, we are held in God's love and we will be OK. And together, we, God's people, will make that a reality. We will battle the evil. We will fight the darkness. We will share light with others. That is the privilege of being God's people. We are blessed and we must share our blessings with others. Amen. Matt, would you lead us in the creed, please? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you. Here is a lovely setting of It Is A Thing Most Wonderful taking us very back to the basics of our faith.
Lord God, the gospel makes us feel uncomfortable. We may not feel we feast sumptuously, but we know we are much better off than the vast majority of people in this world. We are grateful for all we have, and we ask that you will help us to walk in faith and love, seeking to be your people in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we want others to share our faith, to know you as their Messiah, to journey with us to be your people in this world. We're not good at talking about our faith, explaining why faith matters, encouraging others to be people of faith. Lord, help us in our words and our actions to help proclaim your presence in our world and help people find a personal faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for so many contacts we have in our lives and in our churches. We pray for those who were married in St Edmunds yesterday, for all our wedding couples and baptism families. Thank you for them and their faith. Help us to celebrate with them, to rejoice with them, to learn from their faith and their journeys. Help us to share with them our faith in you, our purpose, our life as a church so we can share your journey together. We pray for the life of our diocese, our bishops, Libby and Malcolm, the life of our Alastry churches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for our teachers, for our schools and universities. Life in the classroom is not easy. It's not easy if you're a young person just left home having to budget and cope in these difficult times. We pray for those who are enthusiastic and we pray for those struggling to fulfil their vocation in our difficult world. We pray for our young people and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We are frightened by the pictures from Ukraine and from Russia, the people of Afghanistan and so many other areas of oppression and violence, for war zones where generations have been blighted by hatred and violence, for areas where the changing climate is making it almost impossible to survive, for men, women and children who are trying to escape from starvation and violence and find that no one wants them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our own country, where the pandemic has seen the number of food banks increase and the number of people who are billionaires has increased as well. A country where some have huge wealth, and for many this will be a cold and hungry winter. A country that struggles to care, where care services are on the point of collapse and the NHS is struggling to keep up with demand. Forgive us, Lord, that we have lost our way, that our Christian values are ignored. May we somehow turn back to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our families and our friends. For those we are especially concerned about, we name them before you. We remember friends who have died and we hold them in our love and our prayers. And we bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Will you come and follow me, if I but call your name?
lovely chirpy hymn to finish with. I love that one. <coughs> May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lovely.